Hello everyone, welcome back. We are back after a bit of a break. So we are back with Gleck. We are uh, We have returned! We're finally freaking back! It's been a long time. Uh we we were gone for breaks and stuff, like actual like school breaks. So it has been a long time since we have been back and the season is starting up again. So we are actually getting started here pretty quickly. Um, it, we are up against San, St. Francis. Oh my. <sighs> Break did something, man. <laughs> but we are up against St. Francis today uh, in Gleck Tournament. So this is going to be a good time. This is our first match this season. And we are ready to get back into it. We actually have a returning member that we did not have last semester. Um, they were gone, uh, being overseas. They were studying abroad. So they have returned to us. They have come back. And they have returned playing a new character than they left with. Yeah. So it's going to be a bit spicy. Uh, I'm not sure the order we're going to go with. But I, th uh, from what I can see, we're going to be sending them in first. So we're going to get to see, that one, see their new character debut in tournament we have been seeing it in friendlies of course but getting to see it in tournament see how it does will be fun yeah and you completely forgot introductions <laughs> hey you know most people don't want to know who i am anyway <laughs> well um continue doing introductions i'm aubrey arj uh this is i i'm cheetah quick nine cq nine i have too many freaking names because it gosh dang character limits but we are here for Valpo Esports. You're also most commonly called Weston. <laughs> At this point, I might as well just be most commonly called Cheetah Quick 9 because I don't talk to people. <laughs> everyone on the team calls you Weston, so everyone should know. Nah, everyone on the team calls me bad. It's awesome. <laughs> okay, maybe not. We're a bit, we're a bit nicer to each other than that. Um, a bit, have, but yeah. We do also Yep. So on Saturdays, you're most likely going to see us two casting. Yep. <laughs> um, we are being a bit more uh, a, a bit more planned with our rosters than last semester. Last semester we just kind of had a group of people that we just kind of pick from and throw in. But this year we do have uh, this semester. Sorry, but we do have a bit more of a planned team. So <clears throat> hoping that keeps us a bit more organized and takes away some of the confusion so we do have more of a consistent roster consisting of um the person who is back from abroad alex and then chris and keegan who are familiar faces to those who were watching last semester yeah um so that's our Galact team and then we have our own individual necc team yep. which you are on um i'm assuming keegan and chris are casting those or not uh i'm not entirely sure not gonna lie um, see, this seems a common theme with me. Of, uh, I don't know what's going on, I just show it to play. Okay. Um, I just show it to play when I'm told, and uh, whatever's going on outside of that, uh, sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> you just show up regardless. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even fight that, you tried to. And yeah. Oh yeah, no, I, I can't argue that because it's true. I just show up when I'm told to and play when I'm told to. And you know what? It's been working for so far, so... I don't know. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. You just show up regardless. That's true. <laughs> I have played... I have been down here for way too much time before. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <clears throat> but, and, you, and you still claim you hate this video game. Oh, that's because I do. It's called Stockholm Syndrome. It's awesome. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Well, they have finished stage ban. S speaking of... A, freaking long time stage picks might finally be done now for this person <laughs> hey I, you I know think stage picks are done they they picked the possibly stage. i don't know but they picked the stage uh, they did the other person hasn't yeah um yeah th this whole time we've been sitting in the menu waiting for stage picks but um since I mean, it is competition, so it's it, it's understandable they want to take their time with it. It is just comical to be on the outside, as since you aren't sitting there and the decision making, it just you're just waiting. So it gets quite silly sometimes. But um, did like the Gleck rules for changes, like stage changes, change? Uh, I do not okay, think so. so. Button check. Uh, yeah. So, um, okay. <laughs> it seems they are uh, hopefully. They picked random, 
So I'm hoping they're doing a button check, otherwise I am concerned. <laughs> um, I better see what okay. okay. Okay, we're good. We're not going random round one. <laughs> this is a button check. <laughs> and we got King K. Roll. <laughs> okay. Uh. We're good. <laughs> Man, what, what a way to start off the semester that would be, though, of just starting off of a random, <laughs> random pick. That, that's something I would expect from Chris more, um, yes. just because that's actually just his main at this point. <laughs> but um. yeah, so um, right right now they're just in a random be random match just to uh, make sure their buttons are working. So checking the latency since it is online. So. Just a way to to make it a bit more fair and just better for both for uh, both opponents. So button check should be getting over here pretty shortly. So after that, they will then switch characters to who they're actually playing, and then they will get into the actual matches. So uh, I believe the I believe the button check has like a max timer of like a minute. So that should be done here soon. Anyway. And, Hopefully. Yep. I'm not sure what to talk about for to keep stalling. Well. Right now. Here's an idea to talk about. So, they have picked the stage. So they they uh, they picked random for the character for button check, but they did not pick the random stage. So that means they did select town and city, and um, based off of that, it means that that is where we're going. And I know who Alex is playing, but I have no clue who the heck their opponent is. And uh, I'm getting robbed. <laughs> you have a problem here. <laughs> did you not enjoy hearing my voice? Okay, I'll stop breathing then. <laughs> you know what? It's optional. <laughs> I mean, you technically can go the rest of your life without breathing. Ready? <laughs> um, uh. That was the funniest thing I think that's ever happened. Okay, <laughs> so we are getting into the match, finally, now. Um, Does that count as an interruption? No. <laughs> no, no. I, I would like to keep my job. I'm assuming you would like to keep this gig as well. Fine. Because you could be replaced. But, but I was talking about it earlier, how we were not sure about what, uh, how I wasn't sure what character was going to show up, and we seem to have uh, figured out that dilemma. We are going with the cloud, and the character that I was mentioning before that they have uh, brought out anew is the Link. They were a Corrin player before, so they have swapped characters. Yeah, very interesting. Um, we were seeing a little bit of them Warming, Alex warming up his Alec, oh, not Alex, <laughs> his Link earlier, and it was very interesting to watch. Yep. So, I know he was preparing for Ken, though, so we'll see <laughs> if that shows up. I think they were just memeing, but that would have been funny. Yeah. Um, but nice, nice early stock. He does get the first stock with his debut of the Link in bracket, so... Mm -hmm. All in a uh, good showing right now, just trying to get on a little extra percent, but has not been able to get anything. Just been kind of run down since Cloud got that intangibility at the beginning, gets into advantage, and has not gotten to stabilize yet, but yeah. does lose the stock there. So now it is back to even, and Cloud is glowing blue. Not anymore, though. <laughs> <laughs> he is down a shield, though, so he's going to need to be a little bit more liberal with his shield uses right now. They, both of these characters do have really good uh, up B's out of shields, uh, so this might be a this might be an up B kind of game. I feel like most games are an up B kind of game. <laughs> Depends on your character, but yeah. <laughs> but, nice grab there coming out. Ooh, almost gets the platform extension off of that soft hit in air. But, trades a little bit, and Cloud is now glowing blue, but is at the percent lead. Well, I feel like we should mention, instead of glowing blue, we should say he's at limit. <laughs> oh, that, yeah, he's glowing blue. Oh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> apparently, we're mostly just seeing a lot of trading back and forth between state advantage stages. Yep. Uh, actually, surprising enough, this was uh, just like the practice before. Uh, not much neutral, just advantage state. <laughs> But what that does mean that uh, Alex does have a bit of warm up and being just an advantage state. So <laughs> trying to get back into it here. Nice boomerang just to catch him out. Tries to call out the landing with Map Smash. But managed to get the shield up this time. He isn't using his bombs as much as I feel like he should. 
Yeah, I, I feel like pulling a bomb can be quite dangerous against Cloud just because of the range that he has. And especially since Cloud is kind of quick and has that long horizontal range, especially in the form of back air, uh, pulling that bomb can actually be quite dangerous as it does have that startup. He might not have the distance to be able to pull it reliably since Cloud can catch up. Yeah. But I know he, um, I know Bomb is one of Link's most successful, like, uh, combo tools. So. Yeah, he, he definitely does have a lot of setups. And there again, we see pretty much a repeat of the first stock of Alex taking the stock first and just not being able to get any extra credit. Hey, but we will take those because even though it still ties up the game, it makes an even playing field. The rest yep. stock. Makes it an even playing field, and we were taking the stocks first, so that is a trade we are willing to take. Yes, like we say, we take Ooh. those. Nice, nice awareness from Alex to know that Boomerang was coming back. Called that out, uh, caught, caught at the Boomerang coming back with a Nair to grab. Really nice extension, so now he is in advantage with the ledge trap. Goes to the F smash, but not quite getting it. Again with the grab into the Boomerang. And we are seeing that common Nair. Nice. That was a really nice mix-up because he had been nairing on the shield uh, a lot prior, which of course nair is only that single hit, so that uh, the Cloud got used to that and he mixed it up with a forward air that's two hits, Cloud put the shield down after the second one, and it, it caught and took the game. So yes, nice good. early lead and good debut of the link. Yes, good debut. Um, do you know what other characters St. Francis has? I'm going to let you uh, answer that based on your knowledge of my knowledge. No, I have no idea no, what the character doesn't. roster is. No, he doesn't. I was about to look at the camera and be like, welcome to one of the players on the Smash Bros. team. They don't know what they're talking, doing. We just show up. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I do not know the rosters here. There are too many schools for me to keep them straight. I always constantly have to check. but. Like, you can check before the match. Well, by checking, I mean ask other people who know, and they are currently uh, playing. But I guess it, it, it is more important for them to know than me. <laughs> but you could have also asked. I could have, but where's the fun on that? We get a surprise now. <laughs> uh... hey, we gotta keep it. We gotta keep it entertaining here. We, we gotta. We, we we do have quite the fun streams here. And I, I would I would assume <laughs> Mike would love to disagree on that. <laughs> what, do, do you not enjoy my uh, Xenoblade rants? Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> Sarcasm from Mike coming in very hot right now. Oh, man. <laughs> and of course, you know, stage bands, they're going to take a while. Yep. So... In the meantime, since we uh, obviously don't know any of their characters as we have established, uh, we can talk a bit about the Link debut. Yes. Yeah, so he was playing Corrin last semester and the year prior, I believe. Um, well, a year ago. He wasn't playing last semester. Well, yeah, that's why I said a year ago. <laughs> that's why, yeah. You but... said last semester. Yeah, he was playing Corrin. Yeah, he, he was playing Corrin. He just wasn't playing here since he was abroad, but he was actively playing Smash. Uh -huh. um, that that's where the link came from. Uh, over there, our other team member that is abroad, Josh, uh, he was playing Link with him and training the Link up. So this is not a random untrained Link. He has been practicing, and here we see the Ken that we joked about. So <laughs> I was like, hmm, I think there's a Ken that's coming up, but you're like, nah, I think that was a joke. I thought that was joking because Keegan went uh, Ryu in practice, and that sure was a game, but. <laughs> Uh, turns out, actually being serious, this is what I get for not knowing what characters we are going to see. But, you know, maybe uh, maybe Keegan's Ryu gave a bit of practice, I hope. So, um, I, <laughs> I feel like Link actually does fine in this matchup with trying to keep Ken at range with long swords and projectiles. Yes, um, while watching uh, Keegan versus... Oh my god! Okay! Alright! <laughs> um, so, anyway... Uh, so our next person, uh, their matchup against Ken. Um. <laughs> <laughs> we got uh, two potential options, really. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking mostly at either Chris or Keegan for coming in yep. with that. We'll say that was a, uh, although it was us on the receiving end, that was pretty spicy. Uh, that, that was good off of them because they were act they were doing really good shield work trying to keep mm -hmm. up with Link pressure. Because as I was saying, that pressure is 
it's distance, it's long, it lasts for a while, and they were using their shield really well to try to get in. And once they got Alex into the corner and caught in a Ken combo, mm -hmm. they just capitalized on it and got the down air and everything. So it was really, it was well played, although we were on the receiving end of it, which is not yes. preferable. <laughs> Yeah, but regardless, the game is tied up. It's not like we're going in with a loss right now, so... Yep. We, Alex did give himself enough of a lead that even with that, we are still even, and it seems like we are sending in Keegan. Yes. Um, most likely, I mean, basically the best matchup to go in, because Captain Falcon, he's still looking to get up and close with Ken, and... Comparatively, uh, Sam is trying to keep range and stuff. Yeah, getting close to Ken is where you do not want to be. <laughs> so I, I think sending in Keegan here as opposed to sending in Chris is the correct option here. Mm -hmm. Getting close to Ken is terrifying. So do we, we want to keep that out of our active game plan. Keegan is also very confident in his Ken yeah. matchup. Yeah. Well, Ke Keegan is generally a pretty confident person anyway uh he sometimes overly so but we we don't uh we don't talk about that part um hey some, sometimes you gotta believe you're the best to be the best if you don't have that mentality sometimes you can bring yourself down other times with that mentality you can bring yourself down but hey you know you gotta be confident in yourself sometimes don't listen to him i think he's going on a rampage y you're right you know what um <laughs> Yeah, I... <laughs> this is why Smash players have no confidence. This is why it's like when they're stage picks. What do we talk about? I don't know. Well, hear me out. We could have a Xenoblade rant no. again. No. Oh, I'm sure it'd be a lot of fun. I'm not sure Mike would really enjoy that one. <laughs> you have everything to lose. I have nothing to lose. <laughs> I can't lose more of my sanity to play this game competitively. You would lose your sanity. You would lose being on the streams. I, I lost uh, I lost my sanity three years ago when I started competing in this game. I don't... Who needs it? I mean, you also chose pits. That is true. <laughs> See, both of those happened at pretty much the same time, which is why the sanity is out the window. Uh -huh. um, I mean, sanity is overrated anyway. You don't need it. And then you found out about Xenoblade. And your obsession with that has... Hey, you know, could go on a rant, but actually, uh, we could just go on a rant about the game starting up here. Yes. So, <laughs> coming in with Keegan against the uh, St. Francis Ken, it is an even game at both six stocks, so we're just starting right out, just, oh, Keegan getting a, <laughs> quite a few up airs. I was scared he was going to go for the zero death, uh, but he was not in the right position for that, but that was a bit terrifying for the Ken. For the Ken, not for us. We would take that. Oh, I would be glad to see that, but I feel I feel almost sorry for the Ken, but never mind, that is going away as the Ken does get in and gets a ton of damage for it. Yes, so uh, this Ken is basically, I believe, their strongest player on the team, unless their roster has changed. Since if I remember season. correctly, yeah. Of course, things can happen, like our semester, where we gained a new, uh, gained a returning player, so never know yep. what can happen. Uh, definitely possible, but as far as I know, nothing has changed, but Ken does take an early lead with the Shoryuken catching Keegan out. That's the scary part about Ken is that, yes, uh, Samus is pretty good at keeping him out, but once he gets in, she's going to take so much damage and he can kill so early. And that was just a showcase of that. Just, man, they were at even percents, but uh, Keegan is now at a deficit. Yes. Unfortunately, we have seen comebacks from before um if you have seen many of our smash bros seems streams we do have quite a lot of comments Ooh, nice double bomb there oh oh it grab broke if that grab didn't break i think the ken was dead but the ken would have been dead. I, I think the ken would have and i know i know keegan wishes it didn't because he has taken so much damage just because of that grab break Oh, gets the down smash too. He does re he does make it back as he was hit off off of ledge, so he does have all of his resources. But tries to go for the same combo that took the first stock and almost connecting, but the back air takes it anyway. This is a rough matchup. It's seeming 
feeling kind of like uh, Sam uh, Keegan Samus is just not as warmed up as he could be. I know he was playing a lot more of some random characters earlier yep. today, so. Yeah, it might have been a smarter idea to warm up the character he was planning to play. But yeah. That might just that might just be a, uh, a showcase of the caliber of players we are going against. We can't always just go whatever character we want. These are some good players. Mm -hmm. That is very true with this Gluck matchup. And um, seeing as some of the changes that have happened with our team in particular, you never know what changes could be happening with other teams as well. Yep. Uh, this matchup is so volatile, it looks like, because Samus, as we talked about, is quite good at keeping Ken out. She has a lot of lot of projectiles, a lot of range, but once Ken gets in, this happens, happens. and Keegan loses the stock. Yep. So, unfortunately, um, we have a pretty good idea of who's getting sent in. Yep, as there is only <laughs> one other option, uh, we can fairly confidently guess that it will be Chris coming in. But what we can't confidently guess with Chris is what kind of character he's going to go. <laughs> like, like he says, he names the entire cast. Yep, you can, you can guess the... Chris is the only person here that you can guess the player and not guess the character. Um, all, all, all of our other players have characters that they quite quite vehemently main, <laughs> but yes. Chris is the one outlier in that he mains like half of the cast. So we, I feel like it's equally likely for us to see a Captain Falcon as it is to see like, who else is in this game? Oh. Piranha Plant. <laughs> plant Gang? Hold up! Hold up. Chris Plant Gang would go insane. <laughs> Alright, Chris, I know you can't hear me through the wall, but next time, Plant Gang? <laughs> if he it, plays... If we play, he plays plant, plant Gang, we will hear him through the wall, and it's just going to be screaming. It will. I will pop off. I will pop off for him. I will pop off for the plant game. No, it won't be popping off. It'll just be screaming. It'll just be regrets. <laughs> yeah, well, on that side, it'll be Chris immediately regretting his decision. <laughs> on our side, I will be popping off. <laughs> It'll be the complete opposite reactions here. Like, this is not the time to be throwing. This is our first match of the season. This is not the time to throw. That is true. The, this Ken has shown himself to uh, not be one we can take lightly as we are getting into the game here, as the Ken does lose a stock, but Chris now has to take five of his three. Yes, unfortunately, but like I said before, we've seen crazier things from Chris. <laughs> we have indeed seen crazier things from, from Chris, and we have also seen Chris, which is also quite crazy, but, but yes. now we see the dangers of having to approach Ken as part of your game plan to be close. Mm -hmm. so already just getting two openings and have taken 50 from it. Yes, unfortunately for Chris right now, um, we are seeing him um, just kind of hopefully um, doing tiny bits of damage, but each time he runs in, he just is not getting any combos or anything to go on. Uh, here's a combo starter, but does get an air dodge out of it. But recognizing that this Ken has been throwing out hitbox to keep him out, goes to the side B and almost kills off of that up smash. <laughs> now, I, actually, I really like that platform coverage because it, if he lands on the platform, he has the option of shielding or rolling or something. Well, up B is a command grab which covers shield, so I actually really like that option coverage from Chris because that grab hitbox is deceptively huge. <laughs> so that was I actually really like that option from Chris. Yeah. But... Um, yeah, Chris was able to come back really strong after that first thing, just but... getting in that nice combo and Ken just not being able to know exactly what happened. Definitely, he got that combo, and then after the combo, he did get a nice finishing read which definitely gave him a lot of opportunity but kind of traded stocks there and at this point we are at a deficit so that's not really something we can reliably do that's not something we can afford to keep going and chris taking so much damage almost dies off of that but trades with the forward air but. yeah unfortunately we are at a very high percentage with him at, at kill percent however he does have his base to his damage unfortunately does kill and now it is now Chris has to not only take this Ken stock with his one, he then has to three stock the next opponent. 
for, for us to be able to take round one. Well, like we've said before, we have seen crazier things happen. That is true, but <laughs> he is he does have the Ken in ledge trapping, but Ken landing an aerial being able to turn it right around on him, quite literally, with the auto turnaround. Yes. With Crisp now being trapped in the corner, but we are um, back to a bit of neutral now. Yeah, the most important thing we could find out right now, though, is just who the next character is. If they don't in particularly know, uh, the best thing he could do right now is just at least take... Ah, uh, I, I understand that. I have done that before, too. Um, yeah. Yep, you, you tried to get to the ledge, but you also want to drift away because you don't want to get caught by the Ken on the ledge mm -hmm. there. That is such a dangerous spot to be caught by Ken, so just got a little too scared, drifted a little too far out, but... Yep. It, it was gonna... You can't fault him too much it was going to be a difficult comeback but sad to see the chance of that comeback go like that but mm -hmm. that is just the first round we are going to our second so we do get another shot here so yeah hopefully we do see chris a little bit more warmed up i'm not sure if he warmed up earlier i don't think he did i am uh, fairly certain he didn't because uh he actively dislikes playing this video game so uh, if he has the chance to not play it he takes it <laughs> We have some strange Smash Bros. players. <laughs> see, uh, I think that's actually redundant there. Uh, see, you said strange and then Smash players. I think it's actually just redundant. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, we are quite interesting in the fact that most of us dislike our own game. <laughs> but we do play it anyway. It is a, uh, a love-hate relationship. Uh, we love to hate the game <laughs> is what that relationship actually is. <laughs> And you also love to get those sick combos when you do. And that's when it changes from a love-hate relationship hey. to a I love this game relationship. And then quickly after, it changes back to a love-hate relationship. Yep. Uh, I, actually, I, I would argue that it stays a love-hate relationship. It just flips. <laughs> See, uh, it, it average gameplay, we, uh, we love to hate the game. And then we get a sick combo and we're like, holy crap, I hate how much I love this game. And then we go back to that normal gameplay and we go, man, I hate this game. <laughs> but we do play it anyway. As much as we hate on it, we do semi enjoy it. <laughs> this is just him coping with the fact that It is, that it really is. <laughs> it is, oh man. This game, it, it sure is one of the games of all time. Well, you willingly choose to play this game. So. You know, no one's perfect, <laughs> <laughs> especially not me. You know, regret life choices can't be regretted. <laughs> but hopefully, one of the life choices that we don't regret is the stage pick for this round one. Ao, uh, it looks like we are hovering town in the city again, so does look like we are going for a repeat of round one, at least on our side. All right, and we also want to just thank Louis Glock for the follow. Awesome there. Oh, and- oh, And another one. <laughs> per <laughs> Perilous Nade. I think that's how you pronounce that. Really? Thank you. Interesting. You see the wildest tags and I, I'm all for it. I love the wild tags that people come up with. It's awesome. I mean, like, most tags aren't that wild, they're just words combined together. Exactly, but sometimes you see the wild ones, like, sometimes uh, some tags are really, I, I really like seeing the random tags people come up with. Unironically, I really like finding the stories behind people's tags, it's really fun, but just, I wonder if there's a story behind the character change, Ayo, <laughs> but uh, it was a repeat, as I mentioned before, it was a repeat of the round one on our side, but it looks like it is not on their side. Swapping to the Palu, I believe this is their third player, this is the player that we didn't get to see last round, so giving them a chance to play. Yeah, most likely, um, I would assume most players don't main the entire cast. <laughs> Chris is a bit of an anomaly in that point, but I do believe that most people don't. But nice up smash, and yep, yep. Politana <laughs> to the top. Politana up air is such a massive move. Sends almost straight up too, so it's very hard to DI and very hard to escape. And getting this Politana opening, one grab gets 40% and a ledge trap. That's just average Politana gameplay. <laughs> yes, unfortunately, um, for the nice air dodge call out. Yes. 
And here's the bomb pulse that you were talking about before. So it, it looks like it is definitely a matchup thing of whether uh, Alex pulls the bombs more or not. Yeah, it seems like he's definitely more comfortable with pulling up the bombs and such. Um, and that's definitely where Link shines on his character with his ability to combo from those bombs. Yeah, he, he has a ton of bomb setups and Alex does know some of oh, them. That almost called out the teleport and that would have been sick. I, I really like I like the idea of that. So now that he has it in his head, I believe he can get something going. Just trying to catch up a bit. Almost catches the bomb again. He does catch the boomerang though. But just trying to even this up. Has taken a lot of extra credit, but getting this stock is what is important. So yes. I'm trying to, trying to call that yeah, out. Yeah, after that first early stock um, from the Palu, um, trying to get in at least two more stocks would be ideal to just keep the match yep. slightly even, even if it is in their favor. Because um, if we lose this game, we will not be able to go to a round three. And yep. let's be frankly honest, uh, Chris and Keegan most certainly want rematches. <laughs> yep. As that is the only chance for us to win this match, I do believe that is what we are going for. And Alex trying to go for it there did did even up the stock count, but did immediately get um, get countered as he was at high percent. And um, that was so that was so close. Um, the nair hitbox, the backwards hitbox of Palutena's nair, claimed with the boomerang. Otherwise, the boomerang would have allowed him to escape that situation. But yes. is at a quite a bit of a deficit here, trying to even it up with the reverse up B off ledge. Does not take the stock, but oh, oh, tries to call it out. Not quite though. He just, he's so close to these callouts, and I'm so ready for him to hit him. It's gonna, it's gonna be crazy. Well, land him, be awesome. I feel like partially this is partially because of the early, just kind of going into the season. First matches are always really rough for so many people. Yep. We could call so many different teams from. Uh, Valpo, especially for just having a weak first game, but suddenly getting really into it by the next week. Yep, it is a bit of the. I mean, you have that little like warm up period of where, hey, we were on a break for a while, we were on a bit of hiatus, whether uh, wh whether we were practicing over break or not, which we most of us weren't over break, but we have been back for uh, back at uh, campus for a little bit, so we have been trying to warm back up. But we are back against the higher caliber of players, so it, yes. it's good to see where we stand up and to get. A a bit, uh, a bit back into it. Mm -hmm. This is one of the um, stronger matchups, uh, especially in the Galak scene for us. In, in terms of uh, in terms of colleges? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it, this is one of the stronger teams for us to go against for a round one, but it is going to be a nice like showcase, just immediately trial by fire. How, how are we going this season? And It looks like we aren't going too bad, but Alex is at high percent. Exploding yeah. Flame going to catch him. Yeah, unfortunately, that was a really good read on the Palutena. Um, Alex had some really good reads there. Mm -hmm. It just unfortunately just weren't working out. It was either yep. like a few frames behind or just it just wasn't working out. Really? I, you hate to see it because you know that they had the reads. Um, mm -hmm. I, I wonder if that's because he might not be used to playing online anymore because we have been playing offline for a while. So. Um, might be a bit of getting used to, which is another factor that comes into us playing the season. Our, our practices are offline and our competitions are online. So there's a bit more delay and a bit different of nuances there. So it might be a little bit to get adjusting to, but not a bad showing at all. Uh, we are only one stock behind and definitely yes. a good showcase of the link here. So mm -hmm. we are pulling in the Chris for this next game, I believe. Mm -hmm. And they are... Uh, now doing stage bands. We are we are back to our uh, back to our stage band curse. <laughs> well, I do want to say uh, one thing though is that you guys do have a little bit of online training with um, I'm trying to remember his name in Germany right now. Um, that's Josh. true. We we do have we do have an option to play against Josh. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, Sadly, it's a bit difficult because of time zones, and he's also doing school, which does make it a bit difficult. But yes, we we have actually played with him before, and it is quite fun. So. I'm gonna be frankly honest. The amount of times I see on the Discord um, for esports, <laughs> the amount of times he's like, "Hey, uh, anyone up for some matches?" and everyone is like, "Yeah, sure." And then there's just a wave of messages in the chat, like, "Just go to a call," and you guys never do. <laughs> 
Who needs Discord voice calls when we could just flood champs? <laughs> but we, we might need to hit him up on that for that online practice as we are getting into our season of online matches. And yes. we are also getting into the match here. This Palutena does have to drop two stocks, though. Mm -hmm. So Chris does only have to take one, and hopefully he can do so without losing his. Yes, and of course he's just going for his traditional of waiting for the other person. Yep. <laughs> Does the correct taunt of show your show me your moves. The iconic Captain Falcon taunt, but also getting a nice <laughs> oh, opening. Calls out the teleport with a dash attack. Nice fair one extension. Does get a lot of damage off of that and gets away pretty much scot free with only 20% on him. Yeah, no, that was an excellent combo. Excellent read. Nice. Amazing. That was a nice call out. That up smash scoop hitbox is massive. So that was a really nice call out. And <laughs> I like the double crab because it didn't give him a turnaround. I feel that. But is still at quite a... Oh, gets an up air off it and gets the kill. <laughs> and... As we mentioned, does get the stock without losing his, so that was the best outcome to show out. And showing off some pretty hot combos there. That was really good combos right there. Yeah, I, I really like the fair one extension off the platform. That was mm -hmm. really nice. He, he had been working on his fair one uh, extensions uh, last semester quite a bit. I don't recall him doing it too much over the practice, like over break, mostly because he was playing other characters, <laughs> uh, mostly to give us character matchup mm -hmm. experience. That is nice that we have someone who can play a lot of characters for matchup experience, but that does mean he's not playing his character, but yes. it looks like it did not lose too much because <laughs> that was kind of cooking. Um, I think that was very cooking. Did you see that teleport read? <laughs> and that teleport <laughs> read did lean up into a platform extension. That was yes. really nice. It was such a nice combo. I think that's one of his best combo games probably that I've really ever seen. Hey, you that know, was really nice. Sometimes you just gotta warm up. <laughs> yeah, it'd be crazy if he could do that before the match, Chris. Hey, you you can't say anything. You're guilty of it too. I'm guilty of it once and I'm not playing today, so hush. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had class 15 minutes for our match. What did you want from me? I want you to practice in class. I'm not quite With sure Joy that's Cons. how that works. Uh, With Joy-Cons. Hey, you know, student athlete, the student comes first. We, we got to take care of our classes first. You know, uh, don't worry, I got you. <laughs> I got you, Tristan. <laughs> and Mike. <laughs> Cover that up. <laughs> but... Nah, I'm joking. I understand. <laughs> Classes come first. I'm just messing with him because it's funny. That is true. I also mess with me. You also mess with me as well. I also mess with a lot of people, to be fair. You mess with everyone. Yep. But <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we're messing with the stage bands because they still take forever. But it, it is an important decision. So as much as we joke about it, it is important to take your time with it. As mm -hmm. they, they are communicating back and forth. So there is some communication time there as well as, well as decision making. So, yeah. As well, much as we meme on it for taking forever. Well, we do also have some interesting things coming up, too. Um, not only do we have the NECC team, which you are on, as well as a few of our other players, but we also have a lot of singles members, too. True. We do have uh, three people participating in singles, as last semester we only had two. So it is um, me and Spencer, I believe you're doing it as well. Yes. And then it is uh, Pi, correct? Yes, Sasa. So we actually have three people doing singles this semester, which we did not. We only had two last semester, so a bit more activity there. And speaking of activity, getting a better <laughs> combo game right there. Trash to go for the two frame, too. He wanted that stock gone at 40. Yes. He saw a cloud off stage, just went, all right, time to kill. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what Chris does a lot of the time. Unfortunately, though, uh, Cloud is getting his advantage back. Yep, just trading back and forth advantages, but it is Chris's turn, but just barely misses the extension. Does get the upbeat, but now Cloud does have limit. Recovering high with it, you do get a ton of area uh, drift with specifically um, limit upbeat. So that was a pretty good recovering high. Wasn't able to cover it quite off, but no, Chris! No! Thought the air dodge would get to ledge, but didn't. SD'd at 67, putting us at a deficit. Not to see that. Not to see that. Um, fortunately, though, we shouldn't get too upset because she still is close to 0%. And uh, 
uh, Cloud is in kill percent right now, so. Cloud is in kill percent. Sometimes you just, sometimes you just gotta shake your head, shake it off, and get right back into it, which is looks like what Chris did. So we like to, we do like to see that. So just yes. getting right back into it. But nice get up attack to cover uh, the ledge trapping there. He's getting quite a bit of percent, but you know it's the stock that matters, not the percent. So unfortunately, yes, it is. So we do see a limit hit on that. Fortunately, using it to get back to ledge. Yep, does use get back to ledge, does get him back to ledge, but does mean that Chris does not have to deal with it. And you know what? It, it goes both ways. That just evened up Chris's. So you know what? we are back to an even playing field a bit. Just shake it off. Just get right back into it. Yep, unfortunately though, the percentage is still incredibly high um, in showing for Chris. Yep. But, like we said, we've seen striker things from Chris before. But nice opening, and Cloud recovering high to avoid Chris. That was a nice recovery mix-up. Ooh, I really like that. Um, the Cloud tried to go for the limit cross slash to cover Chris's up B, but Chris knowingly up B's early to catch him out of that limit side B. That was really nice awareness off of that, and managed to get the kill off of it too, so does even it right back up. But. Yeah, and this brings us to a completely even game. Like we've said before, Chris surprises us. Yup. So, <laughs> it looks like it is much even, much more even before, so we are getting straight back into it with a 0 to 0 uh, after quite interesting stocks from each player. <laughs> so, we do see Cloud at his limit, so we'll see where he decides to pull this off. Uh, goes for the blame beam does not it gets shielded but it is still good pressure and just sometimes just use it to use it you know it's going to run out soon but yeah. it's not bad to get some extra pressure in but yeah unfortunately right now um he is struggling with the oh never mind <laughs> see this is why we need an interruption board <laughs> you're going to get yourself banned from streams <laughs> but Chris, that was such a good jump call out. Yes. He got the down throw, got an up air out of it, but at that percent, another up air, uh, he doesn't have a true follow up. But he went for the jump knee anyway to call out the cloud jumping out of the combo, as mm -hmm. I believe the cloud also knew that he didn't have a true follow up. So I mm -hmm. think the cloud expected him to drop down to try to extend pressure. Chris calling that out, trying to avoid him, and just kneeing up, killing him outright. <laughs> that was at such a low percent too. I think that yes. grab happened at about 70 and Chris is at a percent deficit. So such a yeah. good awareness and call out to be able to even it up there. So we are now at a lead when we started out at a bit of a deficit. Yes, that was about 87% on that cloud. Yeah. So killing incredibly early. Uh, um, and of course you screaming about an interruption board. <laughs> But you you miss how much trolling he does off of camera. <laughs> off of camera, he has become one of Mike's least favorite people, I feel like. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Just. <laughs> but that was a really nice showing from Chris because he, he started out his play at a, bit of, at a stock deficit. He did have to take one for the poly as well and mm -hmm. has taken it back to actually being a stock ahead, which I think is going to be quite important coming into this Ken again. Last round we saw how much of a menace this Ken can be, but now with an extra stock, might help being able to take it out. I mean, let's be frankly honest, Chris wants every single run back he can. That's true. He, <laughs> he is fueled by rage, uh, and not the game mechanic either. <laughs> or yeah, rage. This, this is why we request, um, we request Captain Falcon puns. That's true. Anytime he is on screen. That's true, we do request puns. He is, he is uh, fueled by them. Yes. My word, nair dropping this game doesn't work, but... <laughs> oh my word. Gotta yeah, love some, a little bit of memeing here. Hey, you know, it's like an actual fighting game. The moves traded. But is at a bit of a percent deficit, and against Ken, who definitely has a lot of kill power, this is kind of a scary position to be in, especially because Captain Falcon does have to approach, as we talked about before, but just trying to keep as much percent on, because... As we are a stock ahead this time, trading stocks is a viable option this time. Unfortunately though, um, Ken has a lot more out of range options for this. And... Uh, gets a combo there, gets to show you can evens it up, but you know, 
We still had a lead, so now we have a bit of momentum coming into it, so not too bad. Now it does rest on Keegan's shoulders to be able to take on this camp. Well, let's be frankly honest, um, Keegan is good at this matchup. He didn't show it that last time, but maybe I'm just assuming he hasn't warmed up as much. Yep, hopefully uh, he had a bit of time to warm up his Samus a bit more since he was playing other characters in warm-ups before mm. to try to give some experience to everyone yes. else, but sometimes you gotta focus on yourself a bit. Yes, no, it's on... Not all about everyone else. Yes. But hopefully he had a bit of time for that, so as we see him coming in, we selecting mm -hmm. our fighters right now, so we are seeing Keegan coming in to challenge this Ken. Mm -hmm. um, and since um, it since we did have the lead here, it is Keegan's pick for the stage um, mm -hmm. out of what they left unbanned. So it does give us a bit of momentum and a bit of an advantage, so yes. it's nice so, to see. Um, we are going to likely see a very Samus centric sage in trying to choose a stage that plays to Ken's biggest weaknesses as well. Yep. My guess is ideally you'd probably go to like PS2 town and maybe maybe hollow. But my guess is they can probably ban some of those stages. <laughs> they probably ban town. Actually, yeah, they probably ban town because they know Samus is coming in. Mm -hmm. And they probably banned PS2 because oh. PS2 is Samus's best stage. Mm -hmm. um, they might have not since it is a bit of a smaller stage, so it does keep Ken a bit closer. But my guess is that. So it, it is an interesting workaround since you do have stage bans. But mm -hmm. Keegan does get to pick out of what is left from the stage bans as uh, the, Keegan is the one coming in. So mm -hmm. does give a bit of an advantage there. So does look like we are not going to PS2. <laughs> so I, you know, I'm gonna call that I was right because I called out the stages and then said they were probably banned. But uh, we are yeah. going to actually my favorite stage. I love this stage. This is my this is my favorite legal stage. I love this stage. Yes, it is very tiny. It's kind of cute how small it is. Hey, you know it has small today. What do you expect? So we are seeing some actual amazing job from uh, Keegan right now. Yep, nice zoning. Just just says you know what I don't have to approach you and I'm not going to. And I I like this game plan. Keeps Ken away from him, but. And this is why we want Ken away from him, yes. because he gets one opening and steals that stock away. This is why Ken is so scary. Mm -hmm. I hate Ken. Just because of this, he's so volatile and can very quickly swing the match. Mm -hmm. Yes, unfortunately that shuriken did get a bit of damage on Samus. Early up B, interesting, and unable to get a punish, mixes up his fastball times. Yeah, it's interesting. Still not killing. He is at kill percent, but he does have rage. Uh, I don't think he has a jump here. Yep. Nope. He did not have a jump. Got called out by the forward air. Nice. Uh, that was a nice forward air from Keegan. Called, as I said, called out the jump. Unable to recover from that. And still pretty much at zero. This is an even game here. Mm -hmm. Nice this charge is. shot. Yes, this is an even game. Unfortunately, Ken is able to deal a bit more damage. We don't like that damage because it needs more potential combos and more potential lag later on. Yep, Ken has a lot of combos to get you at a high percent very quickly, and then he has a lot of combos for when you're at high percent to kill you very quickly. Mm -hmm. So it is very dangerous that Ken get very close to you, yes. and Keegan trying to stop that from happening at all costs right now, just trying to keep him away from him. Stay away, it's social distancing. <laughs> no, please, let's not bring back social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> got flashbacks. That, that was a time. Uh, I actually got into uh, competitive Smash during the online period, which was a bit of a trip. And I mean, that was the same time Keegan got into Smash. But back to online we go, <laughs> apparently, but that means Keegan does have a bit of experience in it, and he is keeping this Ken away from him quite well. Does take a stock yes. lead. We have All not right. seen that against Ken yet. Finally getting a stock lead, so now Keegan actually has some real some real challenges because um, now the Ken has to approach. The Ken is at a deficit, yes. and having to approach Samus, especially as Ken, is exactly where Keegan wants him to be. Yes, and um, with that rage, he does get some bonus extra damage on him. I'm um, hoping to take just a tiny bit more of damage just to get him at max rage and then just avoid every single combo. That would be ideal, but nice charge shot. Tries to cover the high recovery. There's one for the missed down air counter. 
but it was, I, I will give him that, it was a good downer to go for. It was covering a lot of options, but just managed to avoid yeah. it. And he still had that extra space coverage because he is up a stock. So even if he missed it or he got really punished poorly, he still would have been perfectly fine. Exactly. And if he hit it, it would have taken the game and it did cover quite a bit of options. So I do like that down there as much as we might meme on it, but does get, does have quite a bit of a percent lead. It is at even stocks though. And we've seen how quickly Ken can even up percent leads. Unfortunately. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, but not going to kill yet. Focus is out of it, but charge oh. shot. Almost kills. This is almost there. He is. There's yes. forwarder. Nice coverage from Keegan. Really like to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Even with the rig headsets, with yep. incredibly large amounts of soundproofing, you can still hear them pop off. The funny thing is that wasn't even Keegan popping off. That was Chris. That was Chris. Yep. <laughs> Chris is the loudest member of our Smash Bros. team. Yeah, he <laughs> is. Sometimes sometimes other members give him a bit of a run for his money, but he definitely is. No, um, so <laughs> he, he's excited because we have brought it now to a round three. We yes. are going to a round three this time. So. Mm -hmm. This is actually, unfortunately, the team that, guy, um, that took you guys out of Black last time. So looking for a bit of revenge here. and. <laughs> that that game two bringing us to a game three does give us the chance to do so. So of course, you know that that round even started with us being at an actual stock deficit. Mm -hmm. So we've shown that we can do it. We can do it, guys. <laughs> so just do it one more time. That's all we need. Just one more time, and we have got this match. But the same can be said for them. We are at a game three. So this is the decider. Hey, this is what we like to see. We like to see these good matchups, and then we get to hear. Chris either popping off or screaming in the background. Either which, very funny, honestly. Sometimes both. So sometimes you'll get the both. <laughs> yep. Sometimes you'll get the bad Chris with also the pop-off Chris. It's very interesting. Yeah. This um, is why we've been designated to the basement. <laughs> yeah, uh, last year we were uh, in the second floor of the Union and there was actually a window there to leading out to the hallway. <laughs> And we were also right next to other rooms. And uh, I, I wasn't here for this as a freshman. Neither, I, neither of us. I were. wish I was, because this sounds hilarious. But uh, apparently there were multiple cases where uh, <laughs> they got a bit loud, which it's Chris. I can definitely see it. I mean, to be frankly honest, <laughs> most of the esports teams are very loud. Yeah, we are a bit. We, we, are have, a, <laughs> we have a lot of pop offs. We're a bit of a, a bit of a group that likes to make a bit of a ruckus. Well, like, it makes sense. I mean, compared to, like, all of the games that we play, a lot of us love to be very loud with pop-offs. <laughs> we like to be loud. We like to celebrate our uh, our good plays, our crazy things that uh, yeah. sometimes we didn't even expect to work. Uh, it, we love to celebrate it. So. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't have, like, a gym to pop off <laughs> in where the sound is contained. No, but it, it, you got to admit, though, it does make for a quite interesting atmosphere. Of, uh, it does. When you can just hear pop-offs going around the room. It's actually, I, I, personally, I like it. Uh, even if I don't play that game, I'm like, hey, you're popping off. That's fun. Yes, it is very fun to be here yep. um, during Overwatch practices. And you hear <laughs> League of Legends in the background screaming and oh. popping off. And then you get the times where Smash is also there. And it, it, it gets a very dynamic out there. It's actually a lot of fun. It's very uh, loud. I feel yep. bad for our iRacing members. <laughs> Yeah. They want quiet. But They're not getting quiet. It is nice that we moved down to the basement uh, up in the second floor. It was also, not only were we loud when we were surrounded by other people, it was also a smaller room. Yes. Uh, and now we have some space to spread out. So while we are also being quite rambunctious and loud, we do have the space to keep, yes. keep it contained within our own group a bit. So. Yep. And this does allow us to do streams for... Um, the Twitch streams. Yep, we have our own room. We have our own rooms for it, which is really nice. So we are yeah. able to do this and getting into the match again. And it's actually a repeat of round one, I believe. I didn't see the stage, but I, I'm assuming it's probably the same. But I'm, I mean, it could be. yep, yep. <laughs> there it is. Same music too, by the way. I'd like to point out. I would not be surprised if Alex is going, uh, trying to get a um, trainer come back. Yep. Something like that. Last time he was at a, we did leave this uh, this game at a bit of a stock deficit and Alex hoping to not do that again. And yes. the thing is we were at a stock deficit and still managed to bring it back, but I think Alex is hoping to not have to bring it back. 
is uh, is probably the plan here. But doing a good job of doing that. Last game we saw quite a strong opening from the Palu as Palu has quite a strong combo game. But this time, Alex being able to avoid those starters and keep it a lot more a lot more favor to his side. I really, I, I like the adaption here. Yes. Um, comparatively, um, going. Yeah, I know you're about to ready to break in. But comparing um, to the game, Palu um, suddenly coming in after like not us not knowing that Palu was coming in was probably definitely part of the shock factor and definitely contributed to a stock being taken because maybe he didn't know exactly who to prepare for. Yep. But now he has a bit of the experience against the Palu. He, he knows what he's getting into a bit. Tries to reverse up B, but no punish on it either. So. No harm, no foul at the end of the day going for that, but... We are seeing a... Nice! <laughs> Told ya. Nice bomb coverage. Gets it at just the right time. Almost was able to teleport out of it, but... Yeah. Not quite. So, but, um, nice like it is, he is starting to finally see those reads, and he's timing them a lot better now, yeah. which is really nice. Uh, does get Palutena. Palutena has such quick vertical movement. Her jumps are very fast and very high. So she can really get up there. Nice! That locked? Excuse me? <laughs> that was... Okay. Not able to capitalize off of it, sadly. I don't think Alex expected that to lock either, but... Yeah. Hey, you know, damage is damage, and it is pretty even in that sense right now, so... Yes, even fights are perfectly fine with us. <laughs> Yep, Mo uh, does get nared off of ledge, but don't get Palutena, don't get Palutena, stop, please. Please don't get Palutena. But does avoid it, does avoid the Palutena. That Palu is not understanding those bombs right now. It is not looking good for them. It is very difficult too, because like in Breath of the Wild that this Link is based off of, um, Link can detonate the bombs himself. Uh, he can yes. choose to delay or do it early. <laughs> the boomerang almost comboed too. That's what he was hoping for, and it almost caught. Oh, that that would have killed too since it was charged. <laughs> it just looked yeah. really funny, but it's very interesting. He's really, really trying to focus in on that boomerang, and that could be his downfall here, to be honest. It is such a strong option, though. It, it's really, it is really strong. Link has some combos off of it, and also has really high priority, uh, especially on that initial bond, uh, the boomerang throw hitbox itself. Has is quite a good hitbox for him, but does get caught with the back air. Does lose the stock a bit early, but has quite a bit of percent here. Yeah, but one nair will most likely even this up. And, and here it is. Strong. Only takes 30. Uh, as against Paulu, taking only 30 from a nair at zero is not actually that bad. Yeah. So. Just trying to rack on the percent here, does avoid the... Unfortunately, um, the warp there did provide a little bit of invincibility, um, even Ooh. though the bomb was perfectly timed. Hot parry! Yes, very nice parry. Um, so we are still seeing an even game, though. 30% is really nothing in the long scheme of things. A lot of characters in this game, Link included, can even up 30% quite quickly. And you can see it here, getting quite a bit of damage. But does it? How did miss that combo? Alex is getting a ton of grabs this game. He's calling out this Palu for shielding so much. God, I'm up there so strong. Oh man! Tries to call out the air dodge instead of the counter. That could have been huge. It would have been huge. But he still is able to take that game anyway, bringing us to a different kind of game. <laughs> you good out there, Chris? <laughs> Holy! Man, that was loud! <laughs> but, as opposed to last round, we saw that we actually, as, as I mentioned, we were at a stock deficit and we had to claw it and we had to bring it back. Now we actually see the reverse of that. Now we're a stock ahead and we get to see Alex play someone other than the freaking Balu. <laughs> so we get to see how he does on that. So. Well, we did see him play the Cloud last time. That is so. true. So. There is a few ways they could pull this. They could try and bring out the cloud and just assume an easy quick kill from the cloud on the link. Or they can just try and pull in their um trying to remember. The cat. Yeah, the can, which has typically been their anchor besides the Palu. So I actually I think they're gonna bring in the Ken here. And I I have two reasons for this. Okay. Um one, 
uh, the St. Francis tends to like to throw out their cannon in the middle anyway. That's just a, that's generally what they like to do, judging from last season. They like to throw it out, see what they can get, uh, make it easier for their last fighter, who may not be as strong, but if they send out the strong one first, it makes it be lighter on them. So that, that is definitely a strategy you can go for. So they do like to do that. That is my first reason for that. Secondly, I don't think they're going to throw out the cloud because Link has a bunch of projectiles, <laughs> namely, namely Bomb and Boomerang, mm -hmm. um, to really try to catch Cloud off stage. Because even Cloud, all you need is just a little nick off stage, and he can die from it. So I, I think they might not throw in the cloud here for fear of getting gimped and losing, uh, getting even farther behind. Yep, but we are going to see, um, of course, you know, taking stage bait. Of course, yes. Um, <laughs> So we do have interesting, if he can take at least one stock, we'll still be in the clear, regardless of how many, regardless mm -hmm. of what happens after this. Even so, just even just one stock does keep us in a lead, but it does look like we are going to the Smash yes. Player default stage. <laughs> PS2, baby! <laughs> um, that does bring interesting, um, definitely Sims can. <laughs> yeah, I, I would assume the con. <laughs> Um, for, for the reasons I mentioned before, and also um, PS2 is a bit of a smaller stage, so it makes it easier for Ken to get a bit closer. But in turn, it does mean that Link's projectiles do control more of the stage. Yes. But you don't have to go as far to get in. So it, it is that bit of a turnaround, and I think that Ken is willing to take that trade off for, yep. the, for the decrease in distance that he has to deal with those projectiles. So. Mm -hmm. He also hasn't faced uh, Link uh, Alex before, so we'll see. Oh, okay. I was wrong. <laughs> we were both wrong. <laughs> All right, so it looks like they are going for the cloud play to try to steal this stock away. So, you know what? It, it's not it, It's not like it's the wrong pick. We will see how this cloud can do. But... Yeah, we don't know exactly what's going on. Uh, he just built limit. Oi? <laughs> Hello? I don't think that's allowed. I don't think it is. So I, yep. It looks like okay. they're not playing. So <laughs> my guess is we're just going to reset. Is my assumption. Yep. Um, that's gonna be interesting. So we're gonna have to yep. see what's going on there. Yeah, I, I would just say uh, reset maybe. I don't know. This is. Oh, yep. Okay. Yeah. That that works. That works. That works too. <laughs> yep. That does work. Don't need the reset. All right. So getting back into it after a little bit of a kerfluffle. But. Yeah, it did. Um, I just feel like that threw Alex a little bit off of his game right there, though. Um, getting straight into a combo right there from that cloud. But Alex coming back with some callouts of his own. And they're stuck. There we go. All right. So, <laughs> so of course, we want Alex to get another stock here. Another stock would be great. But at this point, Alex could lose the stock here, which he does to a cloud yeah. S match as well. But he took a stock, and the stocks was important. Yeah, unfortunately, though, um, unfortunately, he was red on that up B and then punished out of it. There's nothing you can really do there. Most up Bs have a lot of lag, and Cloud just took advantage and just swept right in. Yeah, my, my guess is he probably meant to boomerang, and if he got up B, I'm assuming it was boomerang angle up. But, you know, he did get the stock beforehand, so that is really all that matters. Just one yep. more stock is a great mentality to have, which is what we've been trying to get a lot of more our players yes. to have a bit more of that is one thing that uh jim has tried to hammer into our brains of uh, the one more stock mentality which alex definitely did show one off there so. so definitely an interesting thing but we know um we know how uh i can't even remember his name jim is <laughs> jim yep. we know how jim is with his one more stock i mean we we talk about it all the time just one more stock and yep. it still keeps the lead for us. The stock is what matters, and we did keep the lead, so that is good for us. So we are, yes. we do know that they are bringing in the cloud now because they cannot swap right now. So, <laughs> and we know who we are bringing in, which is more important. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm just imagining if you could swap, that'd be terrible. <laughs> Rules are there for a reason. Hey, but I feel like that'd be more terrible for our opponents because of Chris. <laughs> True, but um. <laughs> We, are, we do have a lead now. We are not only do we get to pick who to put in, 
not only do we get the stage advantage of being able to pick what is left, we also have a stock up thanks to Alex being able to steal that stock away with the nice S smash call out. So Chris now has to actually take less stocks. He doesn't have yes. to go, what was it, five and three. <laughs> he doesn't He doesn't have to do that now. So that does give us a bit more of a solid footing coming into this round mm -hmm. three. So. so it seems like they also chose PS2 yet again. Um, I'm not sure what the cloud, whether the cloud was thinking maybe there was going to be a Samus or not. I think it was pretty obvious who we were going to go, but I mean, that's coming from our team, which we know pretty well. Black, unlike any CC, you don't ask uh, what character they're throwing in, so it is a guess there. So, yes. oh, up airs, up airs. You get some more up airs. No, we just get an F smash instead. You know what? I will take that and need <laughs> zero to death. All right. <laughs> I heard Chris through the wall. <laughs> nice. Oh, calls out the jump. He has to jump here. Oh, almost gets the call out. Yeah. Oh my, that would have been disgusting. I. That I actually would have stood up. That would have been <laughs> disgusting. I mean, to be fair, how Chris is playing is absolutely. And disgusting. there we go. <laughs> he took a total of uh, thirteen percent that game. <laughs> and I can hear Chris through the wall. You, you know what? You should be popping off. That was. Uh, <laughs> That was uh, one of the games of all time. All right, so we are now up a whole player thanks to Chris doing whatever the heck that game was. Um. Chris was like, I do not want to play this video game, so I will win as soon as possible. Hey, you know, uh, most people, when they don't want to play a video game and they have to, they are, they're uh, brought back by it. Chris says, I'm playing this video game. I don't want to be playing this video game. I'm in the mentality of, I want to see less of this game on screen, so you need to die now. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he sure did, didn't he? Um, there was a really nice call out from Chris saying, get off of my screen now, please. <laughs> that was like, that was like less than a minute, it felt like. I, th I think it was, but <laughs> granted the cloud was one stock down, but that was two very, very fast stocks of only taking 13.8%. However, we do need to admit that uh, this is probably going to be a much slower game. Yep, <laughs> this one is going to be different as they only have one option to throw in now. So it yes. is going to be the Ken. And the Ken has shown to be quite challenging in the two rounds mm -hmm. before. It is definitely their strongest player here. But yes. now that we do have both Chris, uh, Chris, I almost said Chris and Fitz, just out of <laughs> just out of habit of saying Chris and Fitz. But we do have Chris and Keegan at full yes. three stocks each to be able to take on this Ken's three by himself, so. Yes, but looking at the Captain Falcon versus Ken, both of them are wanting to get in there. Um, yep. Get in for those combos, because each one has their own combos. Um, regardless of what Chris does, as long as he takes one stock, Keegan is in a fantastic position. Yep. <laughs> that, is, that is the nice part about being up. It's a great advantage. Mm -hmm. We are seeing this Ken get a fair amount of combos, bringing us to 67 damage, which is basically enough to be at kill percent yep, <laughs> for he, Ken. Uh, Chris is at kill percent here. And I, I, I would just like to say the Ken comboed off of a forward air that hit while Chris was behind him. <laughs> and comboed off of it and got like 30. Oh, this game. <laughs> uh, Chris, is, Chris is so... It's so difficult for Chris to find openings here because unlike Cloud, who wants to keep you at a bit of a distance, yes. Ken wants to be up close, which is exactly what Captain Falcon wants to. So it's so difficult yeah. for Chris to be able to get an opening here, but does get a bit of one. Quite a, yeah. quite some good damage. Kiss the down tilt. Nice, nice nice guard. Recognizes that before um, in all the other games, Ken has been recovering low pretty much for free. Calls him out there by going low. And this is not dead too. This is, yep. There we go. Like we said um, before, both of these characters are really trying to get in, so they're going to look for opportunities to get in against each other. Yep. Uh, you're going to look for Ken looking for the exact same opportunities as Captain Falcon. Yep. Both of the both of these characters' opportunities are going to come from being really close to their opponents. As you see, you, you look on the screen, you don't see any swords, although you do see a gun and it's on Captain Falcon's hit, but he just gentlemen's to not using it for some reason. <laughs> He's like, mm, yes, I'm in a fight. Time to not use my gun. Time to just punch you. <laughs> okay, sure, Captain Falcon. You know what? It works for you. Go for it. But um, so this match is more.
more personally based off of skill and based on reading, which is, um, in my opinion, makes for sometimes better and more entertaining fights. Mm -hmm. it, it is definitely entertaining. It is a, quite a slobber knocker of a matchup because both are trying to get in, but it is very difficult for Captain Falcon. Quite on Earth was that word for what? It's fun. <laughs> but it, it is quite a difficult matchup for Captain Falcon because this happens. Ken is so difficult to get on on because he can just put out hitboxes and do 40 or 50% off of every single freaking move. <laughs> yes, so unfortunately um, for that, uh, uh, Chris does have a higher kill percentage requirement for um, that Ken than Ken does for him because yep. many of Ken's moves do combo straight into his kill moves. <laughs> I like that spot dodge coverage of just jabbing. Yeah, that, that is definitely a challenge because Captain Falcon, it's harder for him to get in against Ken, but then he also has to get in more to take the stock. But uh, you don't have to get in more if you get a down air like that. So he evens <laughs> it right back up to 0-0 zero, zero, and Ken's saying, nope, it's actually 0-30 because I'm Ken. But <laughs> Yeah, Chris is just, I'm, I'm expecting to hear a pop off regardless of how this match turns out. This There's gonna be a pop off. I would like to point out here that uh, the Ken has been doing so much more damage just off of combos and stuff, and yes. can, uh, Chris has been getting in less and, and less than the Ken, but Chris has been stealing these stocks away at lower percents. He has yes. been getting these edge guards, been getting these down airs off ledge. He hasn't been needing to get in as much because he's getting these stocks at such lower percents to steal them away. But this should kill here. Nice DI. Yes. Very nice, but it's still at such a dangerous position. Yeah. Honestly, I don't, um, unless we have an excellent comeback. Oh, tries yeah. to call him out the up smash. Just missed. It was, that was very close. Yep. But that was such, that was such a good showing. Gets an edge guard and a, and a stomp. Stealing the stocks away at pretty low percents. And now this Ken has to three stock Keegan <laughs> to win this match. So... And Keegan is our strongest player. Definitely a strong spot for Keegan to come in. I, I'm i assuming he's confident. <laughs> I hope he's confident because when he is confident, he plays better as we have seen throughout seasons. So yes. definitely um, a strong spot for Keegan. But of course, uh, Keegan is also a very good matchup against this yes. cat. So yep. one stock should hopefully not be difficult. Shouldn't be. Uh, uh, knock on wood. Uh, we'll do that. Um, Ke Keegan has done it before. He did do it uh, last round as well. So he has shown that he can go toe to toe with this Ken fairly well, uh, actually coming out on top last round. And now he has a strong advantage coming into it. So yes, this should hopefully be a solid, solid game mm -hmm. to take away. But yes. you know, it is Ken and it's not like this Ken is a pushover either. So definitely yes. going to be a hot game either way. Mm -hmm. So we are going to small battlefield. Are we not going to small battlefield? No, oh, music pick. Xenoblade, Xenoblade, Xenoblade. No! Xenoblade. No! No! Oh, he's hovering it! Please! I think he's doing it just for me! Ah! Being bullied! Being bullied. You're not being bullied. So. He's hovering. He chose a banger, too. Even though it's not Xenoblade music, it's still a banger. You cannot get mad at that. I'll let him have it. <laughs> but I swear he hovered Xenoblade just to annoy me. I'm watching you, Keegan. You can't watch him. There's a wall. And there's a reason we don't have a player cam. Hey, so... <laughs> but... <laughs> after this, I'm, I'm watching you for hovering that. You're gonna need to move your mic back. You are peeking so okay, much no. with the mic. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> we saw some hot, some hot gameplay this match, but hopefully we see some more here. All right, we do hear uh, Keegan's choice of music, and I think it was a very good choice. I'll allow it. I'll allow it. It is, it is not Xenoblade, but I, I will take it. <laughs> You're just, you just want Xenoblade in general. That's true. Yeah, I like Xenoblade a lot, but <laughs> nice up opening. Can't, can't come okay, off of that. Okay, move it back a little bit. You are. <laughs> Make up your mind! What do you want you, from me? You were too loud! Sorry. Um, I was so excited. We, we are seeing heavy percentage from uh, Keegan yep. right there. And remember, the Ken is at only at one stock when Keegan is at three, so all this percent is going to stay on. Yep. You know, Keegan, <laughs> there's another from the miss down air, but I do like the attempt. It doesn't matter, regardless of what he does, it, it, exactly it doesn't matter. He, 
he's got so much room to just do whatever he wants yep. that he could troll the next few games and he would still be the yep. next few matches. He does have two stocks before it's even an even stock and he has so much damage on this next one that he can go for those risky plays and still yes. be perfectly fine after it. So I do like going for that and showing how effective it can be. Jab 2 connecting. <laughs> That's insane. I don't see that very much. Yes. And ooh, nice very air much. And can't add that to the missed down air counter. <laughs> and that <laughs> we hear the pop off. And I can hear Chris going. He got the dare. You know what? Can't <laughs> add that to the counter. There you go. Hey, that brings us to the end of the first that game. That does for bring Gleck. us to the end. That is the that is our first entire round of Gleck. There it is. <laughs> Keegan, Ke Keegan's What's up, Keegan? All right. Okay. <laughs> Hey, you know, third down here is the charm of Paradise. Hi, everyone. Yes, I know what you're going to say. I need a haircut. Uh, anyway, I'm Laird. This is Chris. For if those you need you a haircut, know, I don't want to know about what my hair looks like. Uh, it looks great, man. <laughs> all right, all right. Everything. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, I just want to make a couple announcements real quick. Uh, so, as some of you might be aware, I'm team captain here. I've been happy to announce that Chris is going to be my co-captain, my second in command this semester. Woo. Um, it's, not, it's not an official thing because I haven't talked about it with anybody, but I really want him to be. So, uh, I'm just going to say it publicly so that everyone knows that. You mean the Twitch stream that they're watching outside? Yes. So, uh, those of you out there, uh, deal with it. I'm sorry. I don't know what else to say. Um, furthermore, we're going to be doing things a little bit differently this semester. Um, so, we, we, as you realize, probably we have a bit of a condensed roster for Collect this season. Uh, we're going to be going a bit of a different direction with the team. We have two different groups this year. We're going to have our Glek roster and our NECC roster, which is happening on Tuesdays. So, uh, we're not going to be stretching ourselves as thin as we did last semester. We had a lot of overlap with me playing both days and Friday, and then Chris playing both days and Friday, and so on and so forth. And there was a lot of burnout amongst a lot of us. So, uh, our developmental players and some of the players who are looking to get a little bit of extra reps, they're going to be playing in NECC on Tuesday nights. And Glek is going to be where myself, Chris, and Alex are going to be playing. And on top of that, um, we're happy to announce that Alex is back. He's been traveling <laughs> in Germany. I'm sure they discussed that a lot. So, uh, you know, he's got a new character. We haven't gotten to see too much of it yet, but, you know, it looks very good today for a first showing. And, yeah, so that's the direction we're going in. I'm probably going to be on mic more often on Tuesday nights uh, than I will be the, on the weekends here. Uh, Chris might be joining me some days. He might not be. I don't know what the deal is, but, uh, yeah, that's just the direction. I wanted to keep you all in the loop. Thank you so much for tuning in today, uh, watching us get revenge over St. Francis. <laughs> that you felt guys, good. That felt really good. Yeah, Runner-ups in the last Gleck Conference Championship uh, to Manchester again, as usual. And they knocked us out of playoffs they, last year. They knocked us so, out in the first round, yep. Happy to kind of relieve ourselves of some of that trauma and start the season undefeated once again. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, without further ado, we're going to let you guys get back to the rest of your Saturday. Thanks again for taking the better part of your morning to come in and tune in for us. Uh, we love you guys. Thank you. Stay tuned. I think we have some more Gleck action happening later today. I believe League of Legends is going to be coming on. And on top of that, I don't know when those matches are, but we also have the Overwatch team and the Rocket League team who are going to be competing in the Gleck conference this year as well. At 2 o'clock? 2 yep. o'clock for League of Legends? Okay, 2 o'clock Central Standard Time for League of Legends. You don't want to miss it. That team went on a bit of a run last year as well. So we're going to close it out. We'll see you guys later. Thank you so much. Have a good day.